Okay, a viewer by the name of Connor Dunn asked this question. Uh, he wants to know how to compare the speed of any language, maybe time from start to finish, of two or more languages implementing an algorithm. To give a more concrete example, compare the quick sort algorithm in C and in Python. And um, we'll probably get to his uh, quick sort algorithm in a future tutorial, but I just want to quickly show you how to compare the speed, or basically time, how quick a program takes to run. Uh, and I've, this is something I've shown in the past, but I don't mind going over again. And um, let's see, I have two files here uh, with code. The first one is some C code, it's called uh, math.c. I just called that because we're doing very basic math. We're adding one. We have a function here. The function creates a integer variable of zero. It will loop while that variable x is less than 10,000 adding one to x each time, so it will loop 10,000 times and print the output returning zero at the end of the function. So let's go ahead and save that and let's use GCC to compile that, GCC math.c output I'll call math, and if we just dot slash math, it runs, it runs really quick. Let's do time uh, dot slash math, and here you can see the output of time, it times how long it takes for the program to run. You have the user time and system time, and from what I've read, the user time uh, is how long it is being processed by the CPU, and the system time is how long the operating, operating system takes to do whatever it needs to do. So the best way from what I've read to get an accurate time is uh, to add the two together. I guess you also have this over here, this total time, which is a real time. And from what I've read, that's not, I've, I've been told adding the first two numbers together is more accurate than that. I don't know if that's true or not. That's just something I've read. But let's run this program a few times because you're gonna get different, a little bit different output each time. Uh, so this time we got 0 0.02, 0 0.02, and a total of 0 0.064 there. Zero, 0.02, 0 0.049, 0, 0.01, there. So, fairly consistent with the, at least the user time and the system time as being within 0 0.01 uh, seconds there. Let's look at my second piece of code here, math.py, and same code, only written in Python 3. We have uh, a variable, uh, which is x, which equals zero, while x is less than 10,000, it's gonna loop, adding one to x each time, so it's gonna loop 10,000 times and print the output. Let's go ahead and save that. And we'll just run it the first time, dot py there. Runs fairly quick. As, as far as the end user concerned, in this particular case, there is no difference. But if we time it out, you can see that uh, that, uh, that user time, that time in the processor, is uh, quite a bit higher. I mean, quite a bit higher. It was almost always zero <laughs> before, and now it's 0 0.05 to 0 0.06. There's a 0 0.03. Uh, the, the user time, the operating system time, is pretty much the same. You look at the total time, it's, it's pretty much double, if not more, uh, on average. So that, that's very small. So obviously, the more you're going to calculate, the more of a difference it's going to make. So let's go ahead and um, let's edit our C code here. Instead of 10,000, let's add two zeros there, so it will loop um, a million times. We'll recompile that. We'll say time, math and run it, and as you can see, it's taking quite a bit longer because <laughs> it's it's going to be a hundred times uh, as many loops, and we're about a little more than halfway there. Almost done, and we are done. Okay, so now we got 0.22s for user, 1.88 for system, and a total of 19.326. Uh, so try to remember those numbers, 0 0.22, 1.8, and 19. Now let's go into our um, math.py and do the same thing here. And we'll run that through time. So this time we're running time with our Python script. Let's again remember 0 0.2, 1.8, and 19, just to get round rough numbers there. And we'll let this run. Okay, already it's feeling quite a bit slower. <laughs> and uh, again, this is a very basic 
example, but it's doing a lot of a very simple calculation over and over again. So this time, uh, yeah, so a little bit. The total time was a little bit more, uh, or about the same, 19 point something. The user time and the system time uh, have gone up. The uh, system time, or the, yeah, the user time, which was the CPU time before, was 0 0.22, and now it's 2.78. And the user time, uh, which is the operating system time, uh, went from um, 1.8 to 2.32. So still, I mean, a few seconds difference. But again, if you're doing calculations that take like a day for your computer to calculate, it might take a day in C, it might take three in Python. But I also want to point out, I always like to point this out, that uh, yes, uh, C is probably going to be faster for a lot of stuff uh, than a scripting language such as, as Python or Java or PHP. But uh, especially as programs get more complex, how you write things can make a big difference too. When I've worked on, most projects I work on are small little things to accomplish tasks for myself. But I'll tell you, working on my Metal Bullets project, which is a first person shooter in HTML5 I wrote using uh, JavaScript, um, I start doing stuff and the game would come to a halt. And then I just rewrite the code a little bit better, basically accomplishing the same task, but the game would actually start functioning again. I still have lots of problems with that because I'm a horrible programmer. Um, but how you write program makes a big difference. And then and also, there's also little things you can think of, like this is doing a lot of printing to the screen. Now, uh, if we were to go in our code and not print the output to the screen and just run the code where it's still doing the calculations but not outputting every single line for every single loop, it would make a difference. We could change that in the code, but also as the end user, we can just pipe the standard output to a file. Even writing to the hard drive will speed things up, but we can also write to um, uh, dev null. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to say time uh, and we'll say dot slash math. This is our C code and I'm just going to pipe that into dev null. Look at that. <laughs> the same code that probably took uh, you know 20 seconds before took a fraction of a second now because writing to the screen takes a lot of time. It's basically every loop, it's got to stop, right to the screen, and then loop again. Stop, right to the screen, then loop again. Um, and the same thing would be true for our math.py. So a little bit slower there, quite a bit slower still. Um, so you look at our system, let's run it again here. Yeah, it seems pretty consistent there. Let's do our, our C code a few times. So there, if you eliminate the, the printing to the screen, you can see here that it does make a, a rather big difference. So there's a lot of things to compare rather than just what language you're writing in, but how you write stuff, but also the language you write. Both, both are important. What language you're writing in, but also how you write, and actually even how you can compile in some, some cases, but that's beyond my, my scope of practice. Um, but you can see here, looking at the code, um, without printing the screen, piping everything to null, counting to a million in both languages is a lot faster in C. But again, in this particular short case, it's still fractions of a second. But again, in a bigger project, it could make a big difference. So I hope that answers the question a, a little bit more, but not really. It probably just confused things a little bit. Um, definitely, again, C code is faster. If someone, if you were the same programmer, equally familiar with both languages and write both of them efficiently, obviously C is going to be faster. But if you're a crappy C programmer, but a good Python programmer, which depending on what you're doing, you should be able to, be able to transport your code over with, with it being mostly the same. But let's just say you're a really bad C programmer and you're a good Python programmer, you're probably better off writing the thing in Python because you're going to write it more efficiently, theoretically. There's a lot to look at. Anyway, before I keep repeating myself on how you can go back and forth on this, I just want to thank you for watching. Thank you to um, Connor Dunn for asking this question. And as always, please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There should be a link in the description. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.